We live in a distracting world. A major source for this distraction are due to little devices like this. I attend Stanford Online High School, and as such, I am very familiar with the problems that this distraction poses for our learning environment. This is why I believe that uh, to be an effective student tutor in our modern world, we must figure out ways to mitigate this problem of distraction. My name is Rathan Rogantham, and as I mentioned, I am a student tutor at the OHS. I, we're a cross-discipline tutoring center, so I tutor the subjects math and philosophy. This is my presentation on experiential tutoring. It's a method tutors can use to encourage active tutoring styles that effectively respond to the distractions of the virtual media. In this presentation, I will further elaborate problems that, of distraction that digital devices pose to the learning environment. I will describe how experiential tutoring can be a solution that addresses these problems. And I will showcase a sample application of experiential tutoring to further familiarize ourselves with this concept. Beginning with a better description of the problem of distraction. As I'm sure you guys are familiar with, our virtual world is not the best place to focus. You could get a notification from a social media website, or you could get a really important email that distracts your attention, or a video could call your name. In all these ways, the distractions of our world distract us from being able to focus on our tutoring sessions. So to be an effective tutor, we must figure out how to engage the two T's in a way in which avoids falling into these distractions. Normal passive approaches to tutoring, and by this I mean maybe a presentation or some textbook excerpts or some notes, all these methods don't address this problem of distraction. The two T's can lose interest when you try to implement these ways of tutoring. We must instead look for a more active method of tutoring that effectively engages them. To figure out the solution to this problem, we first must need to take a step back. Let's look at experiential learning in the classroom. Experiential learning is a well-documented practice and it finds great success. It's a method that tutors, that, sorry, that teachers can use to increased participation, which results in increased engagement, which results ultimately in better comprehension, which is the ultimate goal of any learning environment. Why can't we apply these same principles to our tutoring to accomplish the success that experiential teaching has in the classroom? This is what I term as experiential tutoring. I think the best way for me to introduce this concept is through a sample application. This is from my philosophy course that I tutor. And in this course, the student covered Aristotelian biology. Specifically, we were talking about how Aristotle went about describing the animals that he was, sorry, that he was uh, documenting and how that was different from his predecessors and how what it ended up contributing to the general field of biology. Now, all of these answers were given in the textbook. So we could have adopted a more orthodox passive tutoring approach that could have just taken the textbook excerpts, a presentation together, um, maybe some video links. However, as I mentioned before, these passive approaches fail to the distractions of our gadgets. So instead, I decided to play a game of Pictionary. <coughs> what we decided to do is I gave a written description of these animals as described by Aristotle, so a verbatim description translated from Aristotle's works to a presenter. Now the presenters, they were tasked with drawing the animal as Aristotle had described it. As they were drawing this animal, the rest of us attempted to guess exactly what they were trying to draw. Now, as you can see, we had some very talented artists in this section. So we guessed that it was a chameleon quite quickly. 
after we guessed that it was a chameleon, I took the written description that I had given to the presenter and gave it to the rest of the class. And together we discussed exactly how Aristotle was going about describing these animals. We did this using the visual material that the students themselves had generated. This allowed us to get a very intuitive understanding of the mechanics of Aristotelian biology. This also situated us in a good place to discuss the questions of how this was different than previous methods of describing animals and what it ended up contributing to the total study of biology, answering all the questions that the textbook had aimed to answer. So in this way, we covered exactly what needed to be covered. However, by doing it in this manner, using a hands-on approach, we were able to gain this deep intuitive understanding. And we did this by using experiential tutoring methods, which made the concept fun. I want to try something with you guys. Sorry, no. I believe that this experiment was a success and I have some data to back up. Here is my quantitative results. I reached out to the teacher a couple of weeks after I had conducted this session and there was a test that covered a few of the topics, a few of the questions on the test that covered the topics that we discussed in our tutoring session. I contrasted the number of correct answers that my section that had taken an experiential approach had gotten compared to a section that did not take an experiential approach. And as you can see, there was a small percentage increase, but I believe this data to be quite weak for two reasons. First, it's not that huge of a percentage increase, and second, it's a tiny sample size. It's not a very convincing study. That's why I think that the qualitative data is a lot more powerful. Here are some student text responses from my tutoring session. As you can see, everyone was having fun. We all enjoyed the session immensely. And in this way, we engaged all the students, even those who were struggling. I would like to talk about this for a second. Experiential tutoring allows us to engage every single 2T, regardless of how well they comprehend the material. Even a 2T who's struggling to understand what's going on is able to get wrapped up in the way in which we are introducing the subject due to the fact that it's being reduced to a more understandable level. And by doing this, we mitigate the problems of distraction by keeping everyone actively engaged. Now, I want to try something with you guys. I have some handouts here. Now, on the back of the handout is a short written description of an abstract object. I want you guys to begin reading through this description. And as you do so, make note of any visual details that strikes you. Create a mental image of what you expect to see once you peel that sticky note. Don't peel it yet, though. Once you've sort of created this idea in your head of what the object's going to look like, I want you to peel the sticky note and read through this description again, contrasting what you understood the first time just by reading it with what you're now seeing. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do this. Okay, as you guys are wrapping up, I will, this is the object and don't look at it until you peel the sticky note and it ruins the surprise. <laughs> um, Okay, so the metaphor I'm trying to draw here is that this object, the object that was described, represents some complex phenomena. Now, in this activity, it's this contraption. However, in a tutoring environment, it's some mathematical concept or some literary device that the is struggling to comprehend. It could be anything that um, the tutor is not familiar with. The way in which the tutor goes about trying to introduce this complex and initially ununderstood subject is very important. The tutor must do it correctly or it risks losing the effectivity of the writing center. There are two approaches in front of you. The first is a more passive approach paralleled by the handout, sorry, paralleled by the written description on the back of your handout. Just by reading this, 
it is difficult to imagine the object because of the lack of interest that, or the lack of engagement that that, uh, that description has when you're reading it. Contrast that to how you perceive the image. When you look at visual material, you're able to use your sight of sense and your um, concept of vision to engage the material. This is paralleled by experiential tutoring. You're able to use concepts that are not necessarily related to the material, but like the example before the game of charades, we're able to use artistic concepts to relate an abstract concept in a way that is understandable. Hopefully that metaphor demonstrated just how effective doing this is in comparison to more traditional methods. So um, at this point in the presentation, I'd like to give some, uh, share some of my experience in generating these experiential tutoring sections. It is a lot more challenging than a typical tutoring session may be because it's not as simple as just getting a textbook excerpt or pulling some notes. Um, you must put a lot more effort in constructing these. However, I believe that these efforts are rewarded immensely. So the first step in the process is to brainstorm your audience's interest. You need to know exactly what engages your two teams. Only once you're able to comprehend exactly what they're engaged with, you'll be able to relate the material that they understand with the material that they're trying to learn. This is gonna require some creativity. Um, as I showed before, a game of charades could be used or maybe some news clippings for a 2T that is more politically inclined. In these ways, we're able to reduce a concept that might seem abstract to something that is more relatable. And the final point, and the most important point of my presentation, if you take nothing else, is have fun. I had a lot of fun constructing these lessons and interacting with my two Ts. I was able to learn things about them and engage with them. And I really enjoyed the process. And ultimately, that is the best sign that things are working. Because if you're having fun and your two T is having fun, then learning is going to eventually happen. OK, so I think I have plenty of time for Q and A. If you guys have any questions, comments. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just turn the webcam so the mic can hear you. How would you use it? Um, we could use it. Uh, well, let's take you want to repeat the question in case the mic didn't pick it up. Okay. Yep. Okay. Here, I'll turn it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, I believe what was asked was how would you apply methods or experiential tutoring to maybe more STEM-based, like math, for example. Um, courses. Um, I think I might cheat a little bit here. I'll use geometry because it's a little bit more applied. Um, but if you have maybe a geometry course, you can relate maybe a triangle to some real world equivalent. You could use some experiment where you prove that a square plus b square equals c squared in those ways where you're able to relate this abstract to it's just the act of trying to relate an abstract concept to something concrete and for this project do you usually do it in more of a like a group setting or is it kind of individual this particular showcase obviously was in a group setting because it allowed me to collect data um a good amount of data to be able to showcase exactly the effects of it However, I do believe that it can be used in a more individual setting. It will require you to know your 2T better though. Like if they're just meeting you for the first time, I doubt it's going to be possible. You're gonna to have to spend more time learning about them. But again, if, if you do so, I believe it engages people in a way that is often prevented by distractions. <laughs> So the question that was asked is, is there a time and place where experiential tutoring works really well? Um, and is there a time and place where another method, um, sort of similar to the more orthodox methods that I mentioned would be more appropriate? For sure. Um, I think that they work well hand in hand. And the reason I believe this concept works really well is because it happens alongside a classroom. So these students are still reading the textbook in the classroom and they're still discussing it in a more passive way in the classroom. 
if we're able to adopt active tutoring, active tutoring, we're able to complement that because in addition to the passive tutoring, you're able to actively engage them. But I do also think that passive tutoring has its benefits and it's really a 2T specific thing. Like if your 2T is just works really well in a passive setting, then maybe you just stick with that. But in my experience, I've seen that especially people who struggle to be engaged due to distractions, um, I believe that experiential tutoring is a lot more productive in those situations. Any other questions? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys.